Okay, in this uh, screencast, we're going to be covering some more things about position time graphs. I'm trying to sketch a few and um, see what they should look like for various types of motion. All right. Um, so in our first one, we have positive velocity. Now that means I'm moving in this direction here because I'm going to assume up is positive and down is negative with a positive acceleration. Now these two, positive velocity, positive acceleration, those are the same, and so I should get faster. Now, one way I can help myself with this is just to sketch what should a, an object getting faster, what should the motion diagram or motion map look like? Well, my velocities are going to increase, so the spacing between my uh, pictures of equal intervals would increase. Now, that's going to mean that when I try to plot that, if I start here, I'll be here, and then I'll be up here, and then I'll be up here in equal units of time. Now, instead of that making a straight line, it makes an upward curve, which is parabolic. It's based on time squared. Uh, another way to think that through is that my initial slopes should be less steep than my later slopes. So I need to curve upward in a parabolic arc to make that happen. Uh, here I'm moving in the positive velocity, but I'm going to have negative acceleration. These two are opposites. So that means I'm going to slow down. So if I looked at the motion, if I was starting out with a relatively high speed, the spacing would actually get closer and closer together. As I go up the graph, that means that the slope is going to start fairly steep and then get flatter by the end. So if I just take my hand and make a nice curve that flattens out, heads toward flattening out, that's what I'm looking for. And again, it's going to be a parabola based on time squared. <coughs> okay, so let's check the next one here. Now we're moving with a negative velocity. That means we're going down the graph and a positive acceleration. Now again, those two are opposites, so we're going to slow as we move. We're going to start out up here and we're going to be moving downward and we'll find that our spacing gets closer and closer together. Uh, again, that means our slope should start out steep. Now it's a negative slope. So this is a negative slope, and then it's going to get flatter. So I need to take and curve the graph this way, steeper, flatter. Uh, and you can see that there, it's curving off here because these distances in between are getting closer and closer together. Okay, our next one's a negative velocity. Again, that means we're going down the graph and a negative acceleration. Now these two match, so that means we're going to get faster. Now we're coming down the graph, but instead of starting with large uh, intervals and decreasing the size of the intervals, we are probably going to start with smaller intervals and increase the intervals. That also means that we're going to start with a flatter slope, and then we're going to pick up a um, increasing slope as we go. So we're going to end up with a slope that's more like this. So now my hand is going to curve downward like so. Okay, so getting faster but in the negative direction. So the plus and minus don't tell us how fast per se, they tell us the direction. Okay, this time we're going to kind of reverse the motion. We're going to try to uh, look at a graph and come up with a verbal description of what that is. Again, the word constant is important, but it's not enough. So I need constant something. Essentially, I have three possibilities. I have a constant position, meaning I'm in the same place all the time, which would be rest. I could have a constant velocity, and that would mean I'm covering equal intervals of ground for each equal time period that I'm moving. Or I could have a constant acceleration, which means I'm either going to get faster or slower or change my direction, but at a constant rate. So I might speed up by 2 meters per second for every second that I travel. Or I might slow down by 5 meters per second for every second that I travel. Uh, a rest will show up as zero velocity, which means the slope will be equal to zero. So the line will be flat. Some kind of constant velocity, it has to be linear. It has to be a line. And then the acceleration has to be some kind of parabola. So some kind of second order curve. 
All right, <clears throat> so I'm going for a verbal description. I can pretty much split the graph here. During the first part, I have a line. It's not flat, so I'm not at rest. So I have constant velocity. And I can take it a step further. Assuming that up is positive and down is negative, this is a positive slope, an increasing to the up and right slope. So I can say it's constant positive velocity first. Then, at this point here where it splits and changes, the line becomes flat. Flat means no slope, so flat's going to mean rest. Okay, and the next one, again, here's the split. Uh, again, it's an upward straight line, so that's constant positive velocity. The positive part becomes the slope be is because the slope is positive. Uh, and then, in the second half, it's also constant positive velocity, but there is a change. It is faster or a larger value. Uh, the slope has gone from flatter to steeper, so this is faster than the first section. So constant positive velocity, then some other faster constant positive velocity. Uh, and the next one, it looks like we have a curve going on here, so that's going to be part of a parabola. And then we have a line going up. So since we have a parabola, we have constant acceleration. Now, our object is moving up, so it's positive velocity. The slopes are getting steeper, so that indicates we're going to get faster. So the positive velocity should match with the acceleration. So this is a case of positive acceleration. Uh, then, at the dot, our line is becoming straight. So that's going to be constant positive velocity. Now, this is not an unusual motion. Things uh, speed up, speed up for a while. Like you press the accelerator on your car, you get faster, and then you reach the speed you want to travel at, and you move at a pretty constant uh, rate, a constant velocity from there. Okay, and the next one, we have a curve. So we're talking some kind of acceleration here. And then a flat. Now the flat's going to be rest. Uh, the curve this time, we're moving up the graph. So it's constant acceleration. Now we're moving up the graph, that's positive velocity. But at the same time that we're moving up the graph, our slopes are becoming flatter and flatter. In fact, they're getting to the point where eventually they're zero. So we're slowing down. That means the acceleration and the velocity's direction need to be opposites. So since velocity is positive, this is an example of negative acceleration. Um, then rest. So here is a case where we've slowed down, slowed down, slowed down until we've reached a point where we're in the same position for some period of time and we're at rest. So something has rolled across the floor, it slowed down, slowed down, slowed down, and then it finally reaches a place where it stops and the flat line indicates it's going to stay in that same place. Okay, so if you match those back and look back at the ones we started drawing in our first video, you should see them uh, indicating the same thing. The words and the graphs should end up meaning the same. Uh, in our third and final uh, installment, we will go through calculating slopes uh, because that will allow us to calculate the value of